Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we are going to be talking about the lymphatic system here briefly and how it pertains to addressing gut issues. So before we dive in, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Really appreciate it. Also, those, you'll see a little bell near there as well. Make sure you smash that bell. That will help you get the content of new videos coming in your feed. Also, let me know about your struggles with detoxification and your lymphatic system. Really appreciate it. So what is the lymph system? So you have this kind of interchange of fluid in between the tissue and the blood. And this is kind of the lymphatic system, right? It runs throughout the entire body and it really helps keep the tissue and the blood clean. Very important. And one of the big things you see when stress and inflammation starts to accumulate is you start seeing a lot, lot more swelling, okay? Now, when I work with patients, we're doing some kind of a, a clearing program, we're addressing some kind of a gut infection or gut bug, and when we do killing, a lot of times we can see the lymphatic system start to get sluggish because we're throwing all this dead debris into the system from killing these microbes, and that can sludge things up a little bit, kind of like putting molasses uh, you know, on your counter. It's a little bit sludgy. It doesn't, doesn't wipe out as clean. It kind of smears and really creates streaks. And that's what's happening in your body. You, all this stuff's moving and it's like molasses through your veins. So what do we do about it? So first thing is just by hydrating enough, that's going to add more fluid and hopefully make the lymph, you know, more, uh, you know, more fluid and help it move. That's one. So just drinking enough water, right? The solution to pollution is dilution, right? Say that five times fast. So that's helpful. Uh, adding minerals to your water is also very, very helpful. Getting movement. Now, it could be just general exercise. It could be I'm at my stand desk right here. I'm just walking in place. That's all good. You could get like a, a Swiss ball that you sit on and kind of bounce. You could get a rebounder trampoline. You could bounce on that. I got a whole body vibration plate in my in my biohacking lab over there. And that's really good. That's like the best because that's at a really high intensity in three to five minutes, you're like set. You can get a lymphatic brush and kind of brush the skin up gently. Just make sure it goes back in the direction of your heart. So that fluid gets to where it needs to go and can go back into general circulation in the body. So really the lymphatics are that interplay between the blood and the tissue and your, and your body's trying to pull out toxins and move it along and recycle that toxin and or recycle that fluid and or any toxins or inflammatory byproducts because inflammation causes cells to aggregate and stick together and so by keeping inflammation down keeping hydration up and by having natural anti-inflammatories we can make cells less sticky now other things we can do lymphatically ginger tea so ginger is one of my favorites because Ginger, one, it has anti-inflammatory benefits. It has anticoagulant benefits, so it keeps cells from sticking. And it also is a natural motility enhancer. It's a natural migrating motor complex enhancer. So it helps with motility and keeping um, intestines moving that fecal debris throughout the intestinal tract and, and moving it into the toilet. So ginger tea is great. Now, when I make ginger tea, we'll do it with some Manuka honey, which is antibacterial and anti-inflammatory, and also some lime in there too, which is great. You can also do burdock root. Burdock root is excellent. You could find a, you can get it online in different places. The Essiac tea is wonderful. It's got the main ingredient is burdock. It's got I think um, a sheep compound in there. It's got um, Indian rhubarb, and it's got one more thing in there. One more mucilaginous healing supporting herb for the gut. But the big one is burdock root. Love burdock root. Systemic enzymes, I think I already mentioned that. So we could do serapeptidase is a really good one. Taking that away from food breaks up scar tissue. It also prevents things from sticking together, which is part of what junks up a lot of the lymph is cells get too sticky. So that can be helpful. Keeping really good omega-3 fatty acids can be helpful. That keeps things moving as well. We can do things like citrulline and things that help with vasodilation and, and, and nitric Nitric oxide, not nitrous. Nitrous is the laughing gas, but nitric oxide, very helpful. So citrulline and arginine, those kind of vasodilating compounds are, are very good. And then ginkgo. Ginkgo is also wonderful as well. But when I have patients struggling with lymphatic stuff from some kind of a detox, some kind of a GI clearing program, the first thing we're going to do is some kind of a rebounding, uh, hydration, and then we're going to do some kind of a natural um, anticoagulant and, and lymphatic support. And that's going to be my ginger typically or some kind of burdock tea. That really works wonderful. And also if you're doing some kind of a detox or killing and you're overwhelming the lymphatic system, pause. Don't overwhelm the body. You're better off easing into it a little bit more. Maybe go on a supplement holiday for three to seven days, kind of get back to baseline and then inch back into it and don't overwhelm your system. So 
Imagine you get this big trash barrel in your house and you throw your stuff in it and you take it out, no big deal. Big trash barrel equals big capacity to deal with and adapt to stress. Well, now imagine you get this small little trash barrel, right? Well, a couple of little items, it's already overflowing. Well, that overflowing in, in the actual analogy world equals symptoms in lymphatic stress because your body's detoxification trash back is very small and it gets overwhelmed very easily. It's small, just like that basket in your kitchen that's small, it gets overwhelmed and overflows very easy. So people that have small baskets, that's equivalent to they just have a genetic constitution that may be more sensitive to toxins and they have to be more careful. And that supporting that with lymphatic support, like I mentioned, also things that help with glutathione and antioxidant support can obviously be helpful too. And then even adding in gentle binders can be helpful. Activated charcoal, bentonite clay, all those type of binders are also very good. So if you have any detoxification or lymph issues and you want to dive in deeper because the other issues going on besides that, feel free to click below to schedule with myself available worldwide for functional medicine health consultations. If you're enjoying the content, thumbs up, bell, notifications, comments below. All right, let me dive into some of your questions. What is cooking? I may skip your questions if they don't really pertain to the topic, all right? All right, very good. Hey, Joanne, hope you're doing well. Oh, thank you, I really appreciate that, that comment there. Very good. Could incomplete bowel movements be a sign of dehydration? It could be, I mean, one of the easiest things, anytime you have a health issue, right? You can go back to the book, Your Body's Many Cries uh, for Water by Dr. Batman Gillich. Like water is connected to so many conditions. So like when I'm working with a patient, the first thing we do is we get nutrition right, blood sugar right, digestion right, and hydration right. And hydration isn't just drinking good, clean, like filtered water. We're also adding minerals into it as well. But that can make so many things improve. So keep that in the back of your head in regards to um, your BMs and always go to your hydration first. If you're having GI issues alongside uh, digestive issues after eating, would you suggest any, would you suggest anything on an empty stomach? Uh, you could always do some like ginger or some gentle bitters, right? Chamomile, gentian, uh, ginger, orange peel, anise, peppermint. You could always do a gentle bitter five or 10 minutes before that's fine. And then you could always try some enzymes at the top of the meal. Definitely keep your HCL in the middle of the meal, but the bitters and ginger can be very helpful. Doctor, what do you think about phage therapy for healing the gut? Yeah, phages are really good. They've been around since 1920. They were, I think, created by Eli Lilly. Couldn't patent it, it was natural. They went the direction of antibiotics after, but phages have really good benefits of knocking down dysbiotic bacteria. I do like them. Tyler writes in, Dr. J, do you have any advice on negative reactions to L-glutamine and digestive enzymes? I get a horrible stomach discomfort and fatigue, SIBO, leaky gut is an issue I'm trying to resolve. So, I mean, it depends. So a lot of people, if you throw good things in to uh, an inflamed gut, maybe the food isn't right, you could have problems. So I would really wanna make sure the food is right. We really pre-digest that food, cooking it well in like a crock pot or an Instapot, nothing's raw. We may just really chew our food up really well, cook it really well, and then taper those enzymes in really slow. And again, I don't know what kind of enzymes you're using, um, mine is Enzyme Synergy. We'll put a link below. That works really well. It's a really good, clean, plant-based enzyme. You can taper up from there. And then if things get better, then we want to add in some HCL or maybe even some HCL sooner. Sometimes that can make a big difference. People that have stomach discomfort, you'd be surprised. Sometimes acidity can actually make it way better. But of course, you know, lean in with a small amount of maybe ACV, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice first. If that doesn't irritate it, then you can kind of step up to the big guns. Ronald writes in, my son's on the spectrum. We put him on a special carb diet to help improve his gut and behavior. How long will it take to get the yeast out of him and improve his gut health? Well, I know nothing about your son's history or how severe or how good or bad he's been doing for a long time. But you should notice within, within a couple of weeks to a month or so, a significant improvement. Now, if he's killing lots of bugs and starving lots of bugs, things may get way worse before they get better because of cravings and because of a lot of acid aldehyde and fungal and biotoxins that are being released. So it, the worst his gut is, he may feel worse for a period of time. So you just have to be aware of that. Make sure you're working with a practitioner. But yeah, a lower carb paleo template, usually like an SCD kind of template, lower carb, maybe lower FODMAP, autoimmune, 
is going to be great. Make sure he's taking enzymes and, and, and HCL as well. And then make sure you, mo you know, if he's your son, make sure you control what's in the house. You know, unless your kid's like 16 and has money and has a car and they can go buy their own crap, you got full control over all their stuff for the most part, especially with lots of uh, homeschooling happening now because of schools being shut down. So control your kid's food and, and just have good expectations and make sure you're working with a good functional medicine practitioner. What's a good test for knowing about your limb? What's a good test for knowing your lymph is being cleaned up? I mean, I don't think you need a test for that, but you can just look at, do you have lots of swollenness in your body, right? Like, like usually lymphatic swollenness, it's acute. Like you see it in your ankles or you'll see it like, uh, in certain areas. Um, like, you know, women will, women know, right? You have P PMS or period time. What happens that, mm, that fluid retention, right? So that's lymphatic stuff. So if you have any acute areas of that, that's a good sign. But do all the things that I mentioned, and that will be a good indication. You know, you kind of have your starting, you know, symptom presentation, and hopefully you can get to a place where, you know, 80 to 90 percent or 100 is even better, even improved from there. Any suggestions for the best digestive enzyme that eases the hemorrhoids? Well, I mean, hemorrhoids off the bat are going to be caused by lots of intra-abdominal pressure lots of gut inflammation, and usually food's a component, poor digestion's a component, gut infections are a component, poor motility is a component, and then the bearing down because of all the gut inflammation too. So you gotta address all of those things. So six R's, remove the bad foods, replace the enzymes and acids, repair the gut linings, remove the infections, repopulate, re-inoculate good bacteria, retest. I know that oversimplifies it, but go look at other podcasts on the topic. Oh yeah, you can topically hit it with some uh, witch hazel too. That's helpful, but it's, it's symptomatic relief. All right, let me see here. All right, great. I think we answered everything, y'all. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Put your comments below. I'll be back tomorrow morning, so make sure you guys stay tuned. Have a phenomenal night, and I hope you enjoyed the content. Take care, y'all.